Is it ionic? Well, there's two ways to tell if a compound's ionic from the periodic table or electronegativity values. This is copyright of the IB. IB, I mean you no harm. I can't even, can't even spell baccalaureate. Is it two L's? Is it two C's? I don't know. Okay, electronegativity. That is defined as a, an atom's ability to attract a bonding pair of electrons. So fluorine has the highest electronegativity of four, and that loves electrons more than any other element. It has the highest electronegativity. I still think of it after all these years as an electron love. Francium has the lowest electronegativity, and that hates electrons more than any other element. Now, you can't say hates. You can say it has the lowest electronegativity. You can't really say hates. So if I was to mix francium and fluorine together, the valence electron, the one valence electron on francium, which is an electrophobe, will be transferred to the fluorine, which loves electrons, leaving behind a positive francium ion and a negative fluoride ion. And there you go, that's ionic bonding. So francium and fluorine have the biggest difference in electronegativity. So they're going to be the most ionic. Uh, the biggest electrophobe, the biggest electrophile in terms of their electronegativity. Now cesium isn't quite such an electrophobe, doesn't have quite such a low electronegativity as francium, but electrons will still transfer to fluorine. And barium, barium is still electrophobic enough compared to fluorine that electrons will transfer. Niobium isn't quite such a hater, a disliker of electrons as the others so far, but the electrons again will still transfer. Now you can see that as we bring in these circles closer together, their electronegativity difference is going to be less and less. Now for niobium and oxygen, the electrons are only just attracted to the oxygen from the niobium. So it's only just an ionic bond. So the distance between the circles is important. If, the, if they're very close, the electronegativity difference is going to be low, and they're going to share the electrons. If they're very far, then the electronegativity difference is going to be big, and they're going to make ionic bonds. So the closer the metal and the non-metal are, the less ionic it is. So let's see if we can find a metal and a non-metal that's covalent. Yeah, copper and phosphorus, they're close enough that the electrons won't transfer from copper to phosphorus. They're actually going to share them. It's going to be a covalent bond. So let's uh, zoom in a bit more on the periodic table. So if the electronegativity difference is greater than 1.7, it's ionic. There's a big difference in electron uh, love, if you will. And if it's smaller than 1.7, it's covalent, or the bond is covalent. Now, 1.7 is a bit arbitrary. I've taught in different countries. Some other countries say it's 1.9. 1.8, but the IB seems happy with 1.7. So looking at calcium and chlorine, calcium chloride, the difference is 2.2, so that's big enough difference to be called ionic. Scandium sulfide, well, the difference there is 1.4 to 2.6. No, no, that difference is less than 1.7, so scandium sulfide is covalent. Even though it's a metal and a non-metal, still covalent. What's the furthest we can go here apart would be rubidium and helium. No, 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 helium doesn't react. It has no electronegativity. So it's got a full outer shell, it's completely inert. So it has no EN value. But rubidium fluoride, that's the, uh, the most ionic compound that we can make using this segment of the periodic table. So go and ask it. You know you want to ask it. What's the question? Okay, so what, is the di what if the difference is exactly 1.7? Well, there are cases of that. Is it ionic? Is it covalent? Well, it's right in the middle there. For argument's sake, you could say, well, let's go to another significant figure and then you can work it out. But really, it's just a spectrum. Uh, you could perhaps see if it, as a solid, it was a, an insulator, but if you melted it or dissolved it, it was a conductor, then you could say, well, maybe it's ionic. But that's probably beyond what you have to know.